Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment below if you're so motivated to do so. This is Wonders of a Black Woman. Well, Kayla Montgomery, who is the founder of Conserve the Culture and also the state director of Blexit in Georgia, she made such an impact and a splash, summing up all of the feelings that Black conservative Americans are feeling during this year's presidential election. She laid out the stark contrast between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Rumor has it that Kamala Harris's camp and the Democratic Party is up in knots at the idea that effective Black Americans who can articulate perfectly the contrast between Donald Trump's presidency and what a Kamala Harris presidency would do to our country. When Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act in 1964, he said that he would have these N-words voting Democrat for the next hundred years. What he didn't count on is the fact that those of us who are not beholden to a party but to a people would stand up not only for our people but for our country. Things have gotten so horrible under the Biden-Harris administration. Those of us who care about our people, who care about our country, are coming out in droves. And they can't stand it. I'm going to play Michaela Montgomery's speech at the Trump rally in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, this past August 3rd, she made some tremendous points. It's something that you, if you're an undecided voter, you really need to consider. And if you were leaning towards voting for Kamala Harris, it really would behoove you to actually listen to this lady here, do your own research, and make an educated, wise decision. Facts over feelings matter. Here's what Michaela had to say at the Trump rally. I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So, <laughs> my name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick fil A, but I am so much more than that. <laughs> Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network. So put some respect on my name. Now, why don't we jump right into it? See, as a young single mother, I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high. I, I can tell you that as a young black voter, groceries are too damn high. And as an American citizen, period, seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we kept the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts and not feelings. See, under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll, and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the economy, so I'm going to need 80% of y'all to vote accordingly in November. 
they love me, they love me, they really love me. The left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said, but I want you guys to pay attention to what has been done. They don't want to talk policy. They just want to use propaganda to steal your vote. The left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, <laughs> which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. And why are we acting like strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world? Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago at the debate, Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. We draw the line at a black job. But wait, because if you're wondering what a black job is, please, I encourage you all to drive through Atlanta at all these beautiful black-owned businesses and check and see who works there. Probably a black person working for a black entrepreneur, recycling the black dollar, creating black generational wealth. If they come here illegally and they're taking your jobs and your resources, then please believe my cousins in the Appalachians, they coming for you too. And y'all know Kamala Harris has yet to say Lake and Riley's name. As borders are, she opened the border to millions of illegal immigrants that have flooded American streets with deadly drugs and gangs that have spiked overdoses by over 124% and brought more crime into commu uh, excuse me, minority communities. So how's that for black folks? But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? And done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? And what kind of feminist would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms and school locker rooms? Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? Angela Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never been punched so hard in her life. We cannot allow dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House because my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. <laughs> and what I think both men and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala or the big dog Donald Trump? <laughs> and lastly, 
I cannot get up here without mentioning my farmers, the backbone of this country. And aside from the Biden-Harris administration hurting you guys in ways we can't even comprehend by the rising cry, uh, cost of everything, black farmers suffered even more due to the delays associated with the Inflation Reduction Act signed in 2022. Now, don't let the Biden-Harris administration fool you because they waited until the ninth hour to, dis uh, to sign off on disbursements as a last-minute attempt to garner support. But why would they hurt the agricultural industry? Probably because they're looking forward to making more money in the pharmaceutical one. And speaking of pharmaceuticals, because I promise I'm going to wrap this up, when they bring up abortion and they talk about protecting your medical freedoms, don't be afraid to mention COVID. The Biden-Harris administration forced Americans to take an experimental vaccine and took away their jobs, their livelihoods, and their freedoms if they refused. Trump gave us a choice and Biden gave us a mandate. Hey y'all, cause I'm about to kill him with this one. So the next time the left wants to tell you that, hey, abortion is a right and you need to protect your medical freedoms. Remember that they took those freedoms away from men and women the second they got in office and there's nothing stopping them from doing it again. <laughs> Clock it. <clears throat> so lastly, again, I'm gonna encourage you all to vote based on the facts and not feelings. Oh, he made me feel so bad when he said that. Okay, but they hurt your families when they sent all your tax dollars overseas. Oh, it hurts my feelings when he acts like that. Okay, but it hurts all of us when you see an administration failing their country that they were elected to represent. In which case, I'm going to leave y'all with, hey, mama, daddy, I made it. Woo, that was excellent. I love it. He really needs to have more surrogates going out, reaching out to the minority communities because he gets so much help when he tries to do it, although he does need to continue to do it. Uh, the left-wing media obviously is go uh, they're going absolutely nuts, but I will say this. Voting rights in this country mean that you have the genuine right and the protected right to vote for who you choose to vote for. The Democratic Party and members of the KKK and racists, they do everything they can to try to control our votes. There used to be lynchings, intimidations, all kinds of things in the past to try to stop black people from voting and to and so many repercussions if people wouldn't win. Uh, you notice when the Democrats lose big, they always come out and tongue lash and blame black voters. The Democrats do not own your vote. Just because the Democratic president signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965 does not mean that we should only vote for Democrats. Black people were concerned about legislation, legislative wins, not just a party. And so we need to be careful to not just be beholden to a particular party, but to make sure that you do your due diligence in every election, in every office, up and down ballot, and vote for who you feel is best. No one should be pressured to, harass, or forced to vote for any particular party or any particular candidate, you have the right to vote for who you choose. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment below if you're so motivated. This is Wonders of a Black Woman.